structures in fractional quantum Hall effect. So please uh, share your screen. Can you see the share screen? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, firstly, I want to thank our collaborators, including my uh, my advisor, Professor Aaron Pinzo in Colombia, and also Ursula and Ning Lingjie, who are our former group members. Uh, Ursula is now in Germany and Lingjie now in China, and our sample providers from Pfeiffer's group and uh, Memphis group. So. Uh, Today, I would like to talk about our recent work on the domain textures in fractional quantum Hall effect. And uh, I want to emphasize here that this is a study uh, probing into the bulk phases using optical measurements. Okay, so uh, our interest uh, into the bulk states actually uh, especially inspired by a recent work on the uh, thermal Hall conductance at five halves uh, done in 2018. They observe a thermal hole conductance that is consistent with a coefficient that is consistent with particle hole Fafian, uh, but uh, disagrees with a lot of uh, numerical studies, which slightly uh, favors anti Fafian as the ground state. So, uh, to resolve this uh, disagreement, uh, a lot of efforts are devoted uh, into understanding the edge mode reconstruction uh, due to the bulk phases. Uh, a typical proposal includes the puddle structures uh, forming uh, by anti Fafian puddles and uh, Fafian puddles, and uh, such kind of domain textures uh, uh, would give rise, uh, interact and give rise to a coherent macroscopic uh, particle hole Fafian. And there is another typical proposal, kind of proposal, which focuses on the non equilibrium of the edge mode uh, due to the scattering of the defect in the bulk. And uh, here the ground state is still uh, in the bulk is still anti Fafian. So uh, there are also recent experimental progress, uh, like in probing the noise of neutral edge modes. Uh, although there has not been a conclusive uh, answer to the question of the ground state at five halves, uh, these works uh, make us realize the impact uh, of the bulk phases on the fractional quantum Hall edge transfer. And uh, uh, obviously there is an increasing need of experimental probes into the bulk fractional quantum Hall phases. Uh, meanwhile, uh, from a more general viewpoint, uh, uh, five half states reside in the second lambda level. And second lambda level is kind of special in the sense that uh, it holds competing phases. Uh, some of the phases resemble the fractional quantum Hall phase, uh, like in the lowest lambda level, and some of them resemble the bubble or stripe phases in higher lambda levels. Uh, although uh, they are similar, but uh, they don't, uh, the ground state does not have to be identical. And uh, it shown that there are a lot of possibilities in creating novel ground states in the second lambda level. And uh, here, uh, we are especially interested in the uh, pneumaticity or pneumatic fluids in the second lambda level. So uh, these phases, as well as uh, other correlated phases, are, are believed to be induced by uh, uh, types of electron-electron interactions. So the first a uh, traditional way to induce pneumaticity in the second lambda level is by applying an uh, implant, implant magnetic field. So uh, unlike in higher lambda levels where there is already uh, a stripe phase at half filling, uh, for example, in second lambda level at five half state, uh, an even small implant magnetic field is enough to induce an anisotropic uh, uh, longitudinal resistance. And uh, in most studies, uh, the fractional quantum Hall uh, state which is isotropic under perpendicular field is suppressed uh, with the implant field. And uh, uh, also uh, there is a, 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 some recent work uh, by applying, uh, applying pressure to tune electron and electron interactions, which uh, is surprising to observe a spontaneous transition between uh, the fractional quantum Hall order and the pneumatic liquid at five halves. So uh, besides the five half state, uh, in the second lower level, the case of seven third uh, is particularly interesting uh, because of a, uh, a, a very surprising study uh, reporting the coexistence of uh, both anisotropic in the longitudinal resistance and also a robust plateau uh, in the fractional quantum, uh, in the fractional core resistance up to the uh, lowest temperature they can have. So especially under uh, here 50 millikelvin, uh, the uh, hard axis resistance shows uh, uh, insulating behavior, which uh, increases with decreasing temperature and uh, the uh, whole resistance remain quantized at uh, seven third. So uh, uh, I will leave the, uh, these uh, relevant theoretical interpretations of this work to the 
uh, later of this talk uh, to combine with the discussion of our results. Uh, here, I will uh, just simply note uh, that in the second order level, uh, when the pneumatics interplay with fractional quantum order, uh, uh, there could exist uh, uh, some uh, quantum phase transitions uh, which have delicate uh, domain uh, textures uh, formed uh, as some magic numbers of uh, filling factors like uh, in semester. And our goal in, the, uh, in, in our uh, uh, today's talk is to uh, study the equilibrium of uh, these phases. So uh, uh, seven third especially is an uh, important case where uh, we have uh, uh, interplay between topological orders and uh, symmetry breaking phases. So for the completeness, I, will, uh, I here note that uh, such interplay uh, could also appear in other systems, but they have uh, a more complicated band structure and uh, uh, for this reason, the Galen Arsenide uh, quantum wells study in this case is still uh, the most ideal platform to study the elementary uh, phases due to strong correlations of electrons in the 2D systems. Um, so, uh, in today's talk, I will uh, discuss the doubly resonant inelastic like scattering, which we call drills here, uh, of pneumatic plasmons in the second model level when a small implant magnetic field is applied. And uh, I will show you that such drills method uh, help resolve the pneumatic domain textures of different sizes and uh, links to the Fermi level at 7 third. And uh, finally, I will also touch other filling factors and uh, discuss uh, how this drills method benefits the acceleration of uh, the ground state at five halves. Uh, so first, our sample is a gallium oxide quantum well. We have uh, silicon doping on both sides, and uh, the sample is placed into a uh, cryostat with a base temperature below 50 millikelvin. So uh, uh, the sample is slightly tilted when, when uh, placed into the cryostat, so uh, the magnet will uh, induce an implant magnetic field uh, in the sample. And also we apply a backscattered uh, geometry in the light scattering. Uh, so there will also be a transferred wave factor uh, into the sample during the scattering. So uh, the transfer wave factor K here uh, is provided by the difference between uh, incoming photon wave vector and outgoing photon wave, uh, wave vector during this backscattering geometry. And uh, uh, the original technique we are uh, usually consider is called resonant inelastic light scattering, which is real. Uh, in uh, in is, uh, this light scattering process, we have three virtual transitions. Uh, in this diagram, uh, the, the, in the first step, incoming photon will uh, promote an electron from the valence band to the uh, state in the conduction band, with here we know as uh, state M. And uh, uh, in the second step, the electron-electron interactions in the liquid uh, will bring a transition uh, from this M state to the N state and uh, uh, with the creation of a collective excitation uh, of the fluid. And in the third step, the electron uh, will recombine with the hole and emit a photon. So uh, uh, the energy of uh, the collective excitation created, uh, omega, can be obtained from the difference between uh, the incoming and outgoing uh, photon energy. So using this technique, uh, we uh, previously identified and discovered a series of new platforms in the second order level. Uh, they appear uh, in an unexpected energy range uh, in around one milli electron volt. So below it, it's uh, usual intra lambda level excitations and above it is uh, inter lambda level excitations. And uh, this uh, 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 appearance of the uh, new collective excitations in this energy range indicates that we need to uh, consider some new degrees of freedom uh, that is responsible uh, for the for such excitation. And uh, one important uh, observation is uh, that uh, by the observation of spin waves, we find uh, the spin wave indicates by the red arrows here, uh, uh, deviates or redshifts from the Zeeman energy in a lot of filling factors, which indicates a breakdown of uh, the rotational symmetry in the system. And furthermore, uh, the analysis shows that the uh, plasma energy has a square root dependence uh, with the particle density in the second law level, which is electron density in the lower half and the, the whole density in the upper half. Uh, so this square root dependence is a, a, a character of the plasma of the in two dimensional systems. And uh, also we know that the uh, transferred wave vector here 
uh, has the scattering wavelengths on the order of one micron, and uh, that is much larger than the magnetic lens and also uh, than the typical period of the pneumatic uh, fluids in the second order level. So uh, we are in the long range limit. Uh, we, we are uh, in the long uh, wavelength limit. And this enables us uh, uh, to define a wave vector and uh, uh, apply the uh, dispersion of plasmons to describe uh, the collective excitations uh, we observe. So uh, also considering the broken rotational symmetry, we identify this plasmon uh, as originating from the pneumatic liquids in the second order level. And uh, in the uh, dispersion, we basically use a, uh, make use of the dispersion for uh, 2D plasmons in uniform electron gas, but there is a, a difference uh, uh, scaling from, from the original dispersion described by the parameter psi, which marks the energy difference between uh, pneumatic phases and, and the uniform uh, two-dimensional electron gas. And uh, in that work, we um, originally used uh, width of each single plasmon peak in each single spectrum to obtain the coherence length of the underlying fl uh, uh, pneumatic fluid. But for uh, uh, here for the case of seven third, uh, we now find that besides these man peaks showing in this peak color plot, the bright area, uh, there are, is also a weak broadband underlying these man peaks, which are encircled by these uh, white dashed uh, lines. And this, uh, broad min, uh, this uh, broad band underlying the peaks uh, showing in this red region have uh, one much weaker intensity, uh, but still finite and a much uh, wider energy expansion. So if we still carry on a similar coherence lens analysis, this would imply a, a, a bunch of small lakes of uh, pneumatic fluid coexist with uh, large domains contributing to these man peaks. But the problem is, um, uh, although this implies the possible rich domain textures in our system, how do we uh, distinguish these domain textures and how do we uh, identify their properties? Uh, it turns out that the, the key method is uh, to not looking at a single spectra, but looking at the entire set of uh, spectra near the resonance. So uh, uh, in the usual real analysis, people plot uh, incoming uh, plot the uh, spectra as a function of incoming photon energy. And uh, there is a typical resonance behavior of intensity. People just uh, uh, usually pick up the highest intensity spectra and uh, analyze uh, its uh, line shape. But here we find uh, besides this resonance of intensity, there is also a slight shift in the energy uh, as a function of incoming photon energy. Uh, this, uh, the origin of this energy shift is actually evident if we check uh, the plasma uh, spectra in the absolute energy scale and uh, compare it with the photoluminescence spectra. So uh, uh, this shift is actually related to a confinement of plasma energy with a state uh, in the optical uh, that is corresponding to the uh, a state in the optical emission W we call L. And I will discuss the properties here of, of this L later. So uh, this kind of confinement of the plasma energy uh, related to this shift in the uh, scattering energy, uh, scattering energy uh, variables, uh, indicates that uh, we have an additional outgoing resonance in addition to the uh, usual considered incoming resonance in the real analysis, and uh, we are really having uh, to consider the doubly resonant elastic scattering we call uh, drills in the, in our case for the uh, excitation of plasmas. So to analyze these uh, drills quantitatively, we uh, use a third order perturbation theory and uh, express the intensity as uh, uh, first the square of uh, optical matrix element and also a delta function representing the uh, wave vector conservation. But uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, 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 in reality, due to finite domain size uh, D, uh, there will be a breakdown of wave vector, con uh, wave vector conservation. And as a result, we no longer have a delta function, but uh, we can express such breakdown of wave vector conservation uh, in a Lorentzian. And uh, the width of this Lorentzian uh, will be linked to the uncertainty due to this uh, spatial confinement of uh, finite domain size. And uh, with the plasma dispersion relationship we uh, already found, we can uh, convert this Lorentzian into a, uh, the, the final expression as a function of energy to compare uh, directly with our spectrum in measurements. 
uh, and the, the width here, uh, capital gamma, uh, will uh, be linked directly to the uh, domain size. So our purpose, uh, purpose is to uh, find this gamma I, uh, by applying uh, this model in the analysis. And uh, in, in a drills process, we have to identify uh, which energy level the photons are resonating with. Uh, those energy levels are identified uh, from the optical transitions uh, showing in the photoluminescence and also uh, resonant relief scattering. So here we have three main features. One, uh, the L, which is linked uh, to a superposed uh, position of optical transitions due to correlated states in a previous study. And the X uh, has a linear uh, dependence in energy uh, with the total magnetic field indicates that it's a, a axon associated with the energy of the second lambda level. And the X plus is a, a higher energy axon, uh, which is actually non-equilibrium, so we cannot have a, a, a strong signal in photoluminescence, but uh, it, its existence is clearly indicated in the uh, RS spectra. So the uh, different combinations of those optical transitions served as the resonant channels uh, could define different uh, resonant ranges. And uh, we observed the plasmas, uh, in our case, in two different resonant ranges. Uh, here, in the first case, uh, the low algorithm resonance, uh, the scattering happened between the x axon and the l axon. So what, what happens is that uh, incoming photon will promote electron and form an electron hole pair, uh, forming an x axon, and uh, there will be a scattering to the uh, state in L, and uh, uh, there will be a recombination. In the second step, there will be a creation of the plasma, uh, pneumatic plasma in our case. And in the second resonant range, uh, we call high algorithm resonance, the scattering happened uh, between X plus and X, which is between two X tonic transitions. So uh, now uh, with this basic uh, 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 introduction to the drills, uh, we are ready to look into uh, the domain textures at seven third. So in LOR, we, uh, uh, here is our, uh, spectra generated by the model. Uh, there is a very uh, nice fit with the uh, spectra and uh, gives a uh, uh, psi value 0.12 and the gamma value that uh, shows the estimation of typical domain sizes of five microns. And uh, it indicates that we are probing high quality, large pneumatic domains in LOR. But moreover, uh, we discovered that LOR is the one that probes into the firm level of correlated pneumatic liquid. Uh, to see this, we can uh, plot the outgoing resonance in LR. So uh, this is the, uh, each, each point is the uh, intensity of a plasma in, in the uh, resonance spectra. And uh, we see that outgoing resonance uh, is uh, extremely sharp and also locates at the high energy edge of this L emission. So uh, in that, we already mentioned that this L is assigned to a, a correlated state. And in our case, uh, uh, it's likely to be the pneumatic uh, liquid. Also, uh, if we look at the three-step uh, scattering again, in the second uh, intermediate step, um, uh, we find that uh, there is a quasi particle uh, scattering from the, the x axon in the second lambda level uh, to a vacant state uh, belongs to the L correlated state. And such scattering is uh, coupled to the generation of a pneumatic plasma. So, uh, we are scattering into a vacant state and such a scattering produce a large resonance in the high energy and of L and uh, we assign uh, such uh, uh, a scattering uh, as the resonance with the Fermi level in the pneumatic liquid. And the sharpness of such a uh, uh, resonant with the optical axon associated with the Fermi level uh, is actually uh, remarkable because we are still in a non-uniform uh, quantum liquid. So it is natural to consider how this Fermi level would consider uh, would uh, connect the, uh, the pneumatic liquid that we are probing to the uh, remaining fraction quantum hole liquid uh, uh, orders uh, in the system, and uh, uh, the connection uh, would be of great interest to the interpretations of the ground state and also experimental ev uh, evidence of uh, using uh, transport of H modes. So uh, uh, now I, I will uh, dis uh, briefly discuss how uh, uh, the in L in LR what is the uh, physical picture of the domains we are probing. So uh, actually, uh, I will brief uh, here here I will briefly introduce a series of theoretical works that uh, follows the uh, the uh, observation 
of uh, anisotropic fractional quantum hole resistance at 730 uh, I introduced in, in the first part. And uh, the first and uh, most straightforward interpretation and uh, most theoretical works uh, focusing on the homogeneous phase, which in our case means that a single domain can, could hold uh, both fractional quantum hole order and pneumatic order. So uh, some uh, famous uh, theoretical interpretations, including uh, using a non ginsburg theory or effective field theory. And uh, interestingly, the uh, uh, pneumatic fl uh, fluctuations shown in this uh, study in this uh, pneumatic uh, in this effective field theory uh, shows an intimate connection to the uh, geometric degrees of freedom in the language of gravitons. So uh, meanwhile, we could also have a separated phase uh, picture, which uh, here uh, we show the data of uh, magnetorotons and uh, also plasmons observed at 730 in our system. Uh, there is a, a coexistence of both excitations and uh, uh, remarkably, they are uh, activated or excited with a similar in, in incident photon energy range. So this shows that we have both fractional quantum hole order and uh, pneumatic order in the system. Uh, however, it's, it remains unclear whether uh, these two uh, excitations are from the same domain or just from uh, different separate domains. And uh, uh, actually in the, uh, in the uh, uh, theoretical interpretations I talked about in the last slide, uh, uh, people would uh, expect that uh, a GMP mode or uh, a gap excitation, uh, a neutral gap excitation uh, to collapse across the phase transition to the uh, pneumatic fractional quantum hole phase. So whether we have a softening of such uh, magnetorotons in the experiments and whether we are approximate to a, a quantum uh, critical point during the phase transition uh, needs further study. And actually uh, the energy of this magnetoroton assay is smaller than 0.1 milli electron volt. It's much reduced uh, compared to the uh, rotons in the lower Lambda level. And uh, uh, whether that suggests something unusual uh, is certainly uh, worthwhile to study uh, further in the future. And uh, uh, in a, a separate phase picture, we are uh, we can uh, here there is a, a interesting study uh, on the quantized hole insulators. And uh, they consider the fractional quantum hole uh, puddles in, uh, immersed in an insulating background. And uh, an interesting alternative also would be uh, how what would happen when we replace such insulating background with a pneumatic fluid and uh, how the tunneling between the uh, fractional quantum hole puddles, uh, puddles uh, of the edge modes uh, through the pneumatic liquid uh, would bring unusual signals, especially if they are coupled or interacted with the uh, firm states in the Fermi level in pneumatic liquid with uh, uh, unusual symmetry, broken symmetry. So it's also uh, such phase competition might also resemble the case uh, at five halves. Uh, uh, now uh, we uh, uh, slightly turn away from the LOR case and uh, applying the drills to another reference range we call uh, HOR, uh, we find that there are some uh, deviations in the data uh, with the model, uh, and uh, it will uh, give us uh, only a lower bound of gamma, and uh, which corresponds uh, to upper upper bound of domain sizes, uh, 2.2 microns. Actually, this is uh, kind of expected because when we have uh, small domain sizes, uh, the, the the confinement in uh, due to this domain size is comparable to our uh, transfer scattering wavelengths, which is on the order of one micron. So the mode activated here, the plasma mode in each spectral uh, can no longer be described by a single wave vector. And uh, the, since the wave vector conservation is already broken. And also, uh, and the, the assumption that we have a Lorentzian distribution of uh, the broken wave vector of uh, plasma mode uh, may be no longer applicable. And uh, in this case, we have intriguing small domain textures, uh, which is uh, uh, kind of common in the phase transition, in a, especially when we have a non-uniform uh, liquid. So why are the LR and HOR domain sizes detected uh, so different? Uh, we can use the previous knowledge we gained from the LR uh, to expand it. Uh, the, in LR, we are scattering from an exon to a sharp optical exon near the Fermi edge of pneumatic liquid. And uh, as a result, it is sensitive to the correlated pneumatic states that's uh, interacting with the fractional quantum hole phase. 
But uh, in HOR, we only have scattering between two axons, which are both non-condensed states and extended axons uh, due to the optical, external optical excitation. So uh, instead, they are sensitive to the quantum phases that uh, could be localized by residual impurities and uh, their energies are away from the Fermi level we probed uh, in LOR. So in the last part, I, I will uh, briefly discuss uh, the other flame factors and how drills benefits uh, the study of the ground state uh, at five halves. First, a quick note at uh, uh, the state around eight third, uh, we have also have a drills of plasmons with uh, strong intensity and the domain size is slightly smaller, uh, uh, 3.5 microns. And the most interesting case would be around five halves. Like previously, we identified a suppression of such plasma mode at five halves. And uh, now in a new uh, drills picture, we can uh, see that uh, this uh, single spectra of uh, such plasma uh, overlaps largely with the L entire L uh, emission. And at five halves, because we have only a uh, weak plasma, we cannot really make a uh, very uh, conclusive uh, uh, statement there. But uh, away from five halves, this broad resonance with the entire outgoing channel L uh, indicates that we are having a, a striking different uh, situation compared to the seventh third, when we have a sharp outgoing resonance with uh, the high energy end of L. And the, whether this indicates uh, the possible reconstruction uh, of the Fermi surface in this complicated ground state structure uh, around five halves, uh, it would be a very uh, uh, meaningful topic uh, to uh, study into. So up to now, uh, we are mostly discussing the pneumatic fluids and uh, interacting with fractional uh, quantum hole order. So if we want to probe into the fractional quantum hole uh, domain textures directly, uh, we could make use of the magneto rosons uh, observed before. Uh, for example, a single spectra of magneto rosen uh, will show a series of uh, energy uh, features, uh, where the lowest one is identified as the rosen minimum uh, the, the interpretations of higher energy features is actually has some uncertainty, and they could be assigned to either uh, long wavelength excitations or short wavelength excitations. Uh, if we can resolve their difference uh, and uh, uh, which parts of the dispersion they belong to of each of these features, uh, then the uh, domain size, uh, the scale of the domain size of fractional quantum hall, uh, liquids uh, would be uh, resolved. And here, I would also like to mention two recent proposals in applying this Rose method to explore the ground state at five halves. Uh, especially, they propose uh, we use circular polarized rails uh, to identify the properties of uh, magnetic rosons or gravitons uh, in the, in the uh, five half state. And uh, uh, especially when we uh, further consider doubly resonant uh, rails uh, drills. Uh, we can uh, view and consider th those properties of excitations uh, in the picture uh, with the coupling to the resonant channels of different natures. And this would bring our, uh, some, might bring some new interpretations uh, on, for example, uh, the dispersion of these collective excitations. Uh, so I will uh, here actually a quick review uh, of previous intra and inter lambda levels excitations already show that the features of drills is happening everywhere. It's a, a really a universal phenomenon that is underestimated in uh, previous studies. And uh, uh, due to this drills method, we can detect, uh, uh, thanks to this drills method, we can uh, detect certain phases uh, by probing their uh, characteristic doubly resonant uh, collective modes. Uh, especially we uh, could uh, resolve energy dispersions that is linked to this drills method uh, we can uh, study the evolution of domain textures when the pneumatic orders is interplaying with fractional orders and tuned by external nodes. Also, uh, uh, due to uh, uh, with uh, theoretical, uh, the help of theoretical works, we could resolve uh, the ground state uh, revealed by these collective modes. Okay, so I will uh, leave the summary here and uh, uh, thank you for listening. I appreciate any questions and comments. Okay, thanks for a nice talk. So I see Dima raise your hand. Dima, 